Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 4. We are out of the town, into the second mining area. We're not going to be spending too much time here. Let's see if we can pull one of the scarecrows. Nope, they haven't aggroed yet. Uh, so instead, let's take the left, destroy this red orb fountain, using our fancy new combo C for Red Queen. Uh, that is slash, slash, uh, delay, and then another series of slashes. Uh, that's typically how a lot of inputs are varied up, since you only have one central attack button in Devil May Cry. Uh, unlike a lot of action games which use the light attack, heavy attack control scheme, uh, Devil May Cry actually tends to use just the one primary attack button. But you vary up your combos uh, by delaying each tap of that attack. Uh, so there's also combo B for the Red Queen, which is tap, delay, tap, tap, uh, did I say that right? Uh, tap, delay, tap, delay, tap. Uh, this blue orb that we have coming up here is more of a pain in the ass to get than it looks like. Uh, because I got that though on the first try. That's very rare for me. Um, I promise that's not as easy as I made it look. I do have a, I have a habit of making uh, hard things look easy sometimes, and easy things look hard. Uh, because what'll happen sometimes is either that third hook just won't catch, or it'll dump you right on the ledge, and you'll fall. It's a real big pain in the ass. There are a couple of uh, little jumping puzzles like that coming up in this mission. That can be a little bit annoying. Uh, we'll know when we get to the next one, though. Uh, the next one tends to give people a lot of trouble, but I find it more consistent than the one we just did. Uh, so, now, we're, we're done with the second mining area. I told you we would not be here long. Almost missed this little vital star hidden in the alcove, but remember... Uh, in Devil May Cry games, we don't use those items because they give us a uh, ranking penalty at the end of a mission. So out of the mines and into the snow to Grandmother's house we go. Uh, another thing that we picked up for Nero that you've been seeing is uh, the speed upgrade. After a moment or two of running, you get an extra burst of movement speed so you can cover some of the, the trekking a little bit quicker. Also makes the backtracking more convenient, or less inconvenient, I guess. Also, it's a beautiful vista we have of this, this glowing moon over there. And, of course, the ancient castle in the background. Uh, so, of course, these really skinny pillars you can slash for green orbs. I'm not sure if they count towards the red orb completion, because if you're at full health and you pick a green orb up, you get a little sum of red orbs. Here's a fun little tip, uh, whenever a new enemy is introduced in a cutscene, immediately do something to dodge, whether it be the side roll, a uh, table hopper, or just a straight up jump. Oh, snipe me. Yeah, well, to deal with that, uh, immediately dodge, because more often than not, you will get attacked right out of the cutscene. Uh, this is a tradition they kept up throughout Bayonetta. Uh, that started with Devil May Cry. Actually, not sure which game that started with. It may have been DMC1. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember now. These guys are really fun to buster. Uh, different enemies tend to have different buster animations. The Frosts, which are returning enemies from DMC1, by the way. We haven't seen them in a while. They're a bit less aggressive in this one and a lot chunkier, I find. Um... 
Let's see, we have two hidden red orb caches up on these two specific pillars. And now we can cross into the castle. Oh, you thanks. You're from the Order? I've never seen you before. I'm new. Gloria. You're Nero, right? I've heard rumors. Hasn't everyone? Quite a few, in fact. And none too flattering. So, what's the deal? Where are they coming from? It's strange. No matter the number you kill, more will come. <laughs> then I'll leave that chore to you. I've got some personal slaying to take care of. I'll join with the others. We'll take care of them. May the Savior be with you on your journey. <laughs> savior. Uh, that was our introduction to Gloria. I hate everything about her. She's a shitty, stupid-looking Bayonetta. Uh, with, like, no sense of agency. And that design is the result of her designer actually showing restraint. According to the art book, uh, they patted themselves on the back for restraining themselves on making her a cheesecake fan service character. Yeah. And her whole design just looks fucking bad. Like, any one or two of those design elements could look pretty fine on their own. But it's such a, it's such a bunch of shit thrown together and... Ugh, I'm not a fan of it. Like, she looks like an Egyptian goddess with scoliosis auditioning for an off-brand production of Rocky Horror. And, unfortunately, we gotta smash all this bullshit. Oh, it can get a little bit tedious. So, I'm gonna just fade to the end of all the smashing. And we have the last few things we need to smash for the red orbs for our end of mission ranking. This coffin in the center of the foyer, we can't do anything with that yet. Uh, by the time we're done with this episode, we'll have an item that will allow us to interact with that, but not yet. Uh, this hallway will loop around to the other side of the foyer, uh, but also in the hallway is the means to progress for now. Also, this is a very Devil May Cry tradition, uh, this, this kind of open-ended ancient, ruinous castle. This is a part of the setting that I really, really like. Even if it's not exactly uh, the tower from DMC3 or the castle from DMC1. 
Oh, and there's a thing I forgot to mention about the frosts. Um, one of the most dangerous things they can do is when they dive into the air, they come crashing down and they do a big ice AoE around them. Uh, if you just jump into the air with them, you'll avoid that almost every time. Uh, these gyro blades, we again can't interact with them yet. Uh, the same item that will allow us to progress in the main foyer is what we're going to pick up that will allow us to to uh, interact with the gyro blades. Uh, for now, they are kind of immaterial. Oop, we gotta make sure we don't get caught by him. Ah, that was too many busters in a row. So you can see it didn't uh, allow my style gauge to go up when I did that second buster. Because it depends on the variety of your moves. Uh, so again, you can you can use Air Hike to help against the Frost. It's really useful against them. Uh, mo their most dangerous things happen to you on the ground. Uh, you can also feather your fire button to kind of hover in midair. I may have told this story in a past DMC LP, but bears repeating. Uh, Kamiya, who was the director for the very first Devil May Cry, uh, really did not want jumping to be a feature of the original game. Uh, they really had to wear him down before he finally gave in and gave the go-ahead to let Dante actually fucking jump. And I still say that you can feel the resistance, by the way, there's something behind this one mirror. Uh, there's another one up on the second floor like that, too. Um, I, I really do think you can feel his resistance throughout the series. Uh, to Dante jumping, because I've never felt like the jumping feels all that good. Um, DMC is full of these amazing stylish combos, uh, a lot of which involve doing a lot of fancy aerial maneuvering, but just the basic jump has always felt really rigid to me. Luckily, we have stuff like High Time, uh, Devil Bringers, and loads of special moves to maneuver in the air, so the stiffness of the jump isn't felt all that much. And uh, as time progressed, there was a lot less of that really shitty Devil May Cry platform incorporated into the games as the series kind of went on. So one way in which the uh, the jumping, the, the impact of that was felt a little bit less. Oh, High Time, by the way, was inspired by launchers in Virtua Fighter. Uh, just a second ago, you saw me fire off a much more powerful shot with uh, with Nero's guns, that double-barreled revolver. Uh, that is level one charge shot. Hey, there we go. Um, charge shot is really, really awkward to use in this game with the standard button layout. It's that's because fire is on square. Uh, triangle is your slash, R1 is the lock-on, X is jump if I've never gone through the control setup of this, of this before. Circle is both buster and snatch. It's snatch when you're locked on, buster when you aren't. This is the room that really messes people up. Uh, the biggest piece of advice I can give for getting through this room where you have a whole bunch of these snatch uh, platforms to do is don't touch the control stick whatsoever, don't touch the jump button whatsoever, just snatch your way through this. Don't touch any other button whatsoever. Other than that, it's just lining stuff up. Uh, so again, back to the charge shot though. Uh, in Devil May Cry 3, it was less of a problem to use uh, like the, the gunslinger style to do charge shots and stuff like, uh, like acid rain combos, because Gunslinger was tied to the style button, which in Devil May Cry 3 was circle. So it wasn't quite as awkward to do that stuff. Like, especially the uh, the acid rain combos that I'm thinking of. Here, even if you're claw gripping the controller, it's a little bit clunky. Uh, but you can solve a lot of that. I forgot to do this before I picked Shard Shot up. Um, you can rebind your buttons uh, so that fire is either L1 or I think R2 is another good one. L1 winds up becoming the devil trigger 
button later on, but you can also remind that, I think. Uh, what I like to do is I like to put Devil Trigger on the right trigger and uh, L1 for the fire button because your left hand's really not doing all that much. Oh, man. Right, you don't have any kind of iframes while you're bustering. Should have remembered that. Uh, let's be a little bit more careful with that. The other nice thing about using Buster against the uh, the Frost enemies is that it tosses them far away, so it acts as a means of crowd control. Uh, they're also not so chunky that they're considered to be in a different weight class. Uh, eventually, we'll start... By the end of this episode, actually, we'll come across enemies uh, who are heavier than the standard enemies we've been fighting so far, mainly the uh, Frosts and the variants of the Scarecrow. Oh, you're dead, too. Uh, they'll be considered a little bit heavier, so they're harder to air combo. They're... They take more damage to stagger them, so you can launch them into the air in the first place. Uh, they won't necessarily react to uh, mid-air snatch immediately, or uh, the grounded version of that. Oh, that's not right orb cache, because sworn it was. Might be later on. Uh, we have this out here. Can't really do much with that yet. Uh, and we have a waterfall back there. Again, nothing we can interact with just yet. We also have a combat adjudicator up here. By your hand, you cannot break our clasp. Uh, that is a red combat adjudicator. It's not for a different weapon. Like, you would have the different colored combat adjudicators in DMC3 to indicate that you needed to hit them with a uh, different variety of weapons that you pick up. That one combat adjudicator happens to be red because it's indicating that it can only be hit by Dante. Uh, we're going to skip these couple of frosts because... Trying to make a uh, decent time on this level. And I think I'm pretty good on style points, so I don't need to fight them. Uh, we're going to come over here and hit this generator. And power it up because you see we have this magic barrier preventing us from doing very much, uh, including going through that green door. Uh, and before I forget, I'm going to run past that because remember I said there was a mirror we could break uh, with a false wall behind it on the second floor. I'm pretty sure it's this mirror. Uh, there was another one we ran past on the second floor on the opposite side of the balcony. I don't think that was anything. I think there was an actual proper wall behind it. Uh, whoops, where am I going? Through the green door we go. <clears throat> uh, this room will get a little bit more interesting later on. For now, it's just filled with a bunch of scarecrow enemy- Oh, no, 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 no. That won't do. We gotta exact some revenge upon them. Oh, you know what? Mm. I don't know. Even if I had fought those two frosts, I think I would have been off. Uh, I want to say the style point ranking requirement for this level is 10k, so I'm a decent ways off. I think there are two more big fights, including this one. Uh, I'm not sure if the frosts would have put me over. I think I'm going to wind up around like 8,500, uh, depending on if I do well in this room. It just means I have to get at least, like, a double S or a triple S here. Oh, did I taunt too many times, or did I just not get him with that taunt? Oh, I love the variety of taunts Nero can do. It's so good. I haven't been fighting them stylishly enough. That's good, though. I haven't, aside from that hit at the very beginning of the fight, didn't really take much damage. It's a shame we only hit SS. Uh, at the end of that fight, because it's a uh, multiplier that that works on. Get some more red orbs we can gather. No, oh, no, that's... Oh, yeah, that's the gyro blade. Whoops. <laughs> oh, just a couple green orbs from the suit of armor.
Let's see, which one of these is it? It's either this one or the one directly to my left. Uh, if you do a double jump, hey, we got it on the first go. Yeah, that's right, it's fourth from the, the back, from the Divinity Statue. So, red orb cache up there. Didn't figure this guy for a bookworm. That's one way to get yourself shot. So, you after this guy too, or just here to catch some demons? Silent type, huh? Well, that's annoying. Watch your friendly banter. You want to fight? Come on. As you saw, you can manipulate the camera a little bit during cutscenes. You can zoom in and you can slightly pan uh, around. So these guys... Oh, that's such a good buster! I love the different busters you can do on different enemy types. Uh, these guys are uh, Bianco Angelos. Someone was asking if we would see angels ever in Devil May Cry. Uh, Bianco Angelo... They are not real angels, uh, but that does mean white angel. They also happen to look like Nello Angelos. They share a lot of design similarity. Uh, so the, these guys are really fun to fight. Especially when you do that, when you do the mid-air snatch, because these are heavier enemy variants. You don't pull them towards you, uh, so you pull yourself towards them, and the snatch tends to land you behind them where you need to be. Uh, they will... They're not very responsive to you getting behind them. They won't, they won't just, like, pivot on the spot. Uh, so you get behind them, they can't block you with their shield. You can buster them like that. It's so good. So they're demons in possession of angelic looking armor from the order that Nero is a part of. Um, before you walk through that door that opened up after defeating them, uh, take a look around the room. There are a couple of uh, benches to smash. There's also a second floor to this room. That's easy enough to miss. There are like three benches up here, I think. Uh, which, if you're trying to get a higher rank for red orbs, I probably missed out. There's a red orb cache. Uh, up on the second floor balcony that you just can't really get to with just air hike. Uh, you need a level 3 EX version of his uh, high roller to get up there, to get enough height. Uh, that's the whole thing, though. Oh, one more little detail I forgot to mention about the uh, Bianco Angelos. If you hit them in the front enough time, you can break their shields, uh, but they'll normally parry you when you try to hit you uh, hit them from the front. Uh, so we now have the Anima Mercury that will allow us to a hey, S rank knight, but not bad. Um, that will allow us to interact with the Gyro Blades next time. For now, thanks for watching, everybody. Take it easy. Have a good one.